Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to show you how to add a wired alphanumeric keypad to a DSC Power Series Neo security system. Now, um, a wired keypad, it's like it sounds, it's wired to the panel directly rather than a wireless keypad, which would use RF transmissions to communicate. Um, so this is all wired, connected at the panel. And alphanumeric means that um, it shows letters on the keypad and you can get a, a full English display which is important for programming the system. Now, uh, you may add a touchscreen keypad to your Neo system as well, but it's usually a good idea to have a wired alphanumeric keypad around to serve as the main controller. Um, not necessarily your primary use keypad, but um, for programming the system and setting up an initial wired alphanumeric keypad is a good one. And so I want to briefly discuss about the models of keypads you might add. Uh, the first keypad that we really recommend you use uh, for the first general setup, it's the DSC HS2 LCD RF9N. Um, so, so that's your basic alphanumeric keypad, but it also, the, the RF at the end, um, that, that stands for radio frequency, and it, it includes a, a built-in wireless PowerG transceiver um, for the system. So that way you can start adding PowerG sensors in addition to wired sensors to the system board. Um, the the PowerG sensors are great. They, they have a, a two kilometer range in open air with the NEO system. They offer 128-bit AES encryption. They're extremely secure, so really opens up some doors. So for your first initial keypad, that's really the one you want to go with. Um, if you already have a PowerG transceiver module, or maybe you've already added um, an HS2 LCD RF9N keypad, uh, then you, additional uh, alphanumeric keypads you might add if you want to have a second spot for controlling the system around your home or business. Uh, you would just add uh, the HS2 LCDN which is the same keypad, but without the built-in transceiver. Um, it's a little bit more affordable, and you can only add one PowerG transceiver to the system, so that's uh, the one you would want to go with if you already have a PowerG transceiver. And I just also want to mention there's also the HS2 LCD PN. Uh, the P stands for proximity tag, uh, so you can hold up a little proximity tag in place of entering a code, which is a cool feature if you want to do that. Um, so that's another uh, keypad that you can consider adding. So those three are the main alphanumeric keypads for the NEO system. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, we have our Neo system here and our keypad. Uh, we don't have anything wired up except for the Neo panel, uh, the power connection set up. And the, the keypad, um, uh, we have our panel powered down, uh, first of all. Um, we, we know we have our AC connections at the, at the panel, but um, the transformer is unplugged and the backup battery is disconnected. So make sure you have your system powered down before completing the connections. We have a four conductor, 22 gauge wire. Um, it's already prepared. And we're just going to go ahead and show you how you would do the wiring. So the first thing you want to do is open up the, the Neo keypad. And so you take a flathead screwdriver and insert it into these holes and just kind of force it out there. Don't be afraid to get aggressive with it. It's just the Neo after all. And so we have it opened up. And so these are the terminals where you will complete the connection. Uh, you have R for red, B for black, Y for yellow, in our case white, and G for green. So we're just going to go in and insert these. We have them loosened up already. So just uh, put them in there and tighten them down. Make sure they're nice and secure because um, we have had trouble with these coming loose. Um, I'll try to get my hand out of the way so you can see it a little bit better there. All right, so we're going to do uh, the red wire into R. R is for red, and we're going to tighten this down. Make sure to get it nice and secure. We're going to check our connections after we're done here. That one's good. And then we take a black wire. B. This is for the ground connection or the negative power. It's gonna, we're using stranded wire here, which is easier to strip and prepare. And it's in there nice and securely. We're just going to go and tighten that down. All right, next we have uh, Y for yellow, but in our case, we have the white wire here. Uh, so we'll use that in place of the yellow wire and put that into the hole if it wants to go in there. And I guess we'll insert the green one as well while we're at it, and we'll tighten them down separately because we only have one screwdriver and we can only do one at a time. So we got that one in there, and it looks like the green wire came out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have to, once I get the white one secured, we'll go and we'll get the green one in there. Um, the yellow or white um, and green wires are for the da data connections uh, with the panel, so that's how it communicates. Uh, the red and black wires are for power. And really, color doesn't matter as long as everything is going to the proper spot. OK, so we have completed our connections here. And give it a quick tug. They're nice and secure enough. 
So now we're going to run this wire through the keypad backplate, so that way we can close the keypad. So we have our backplate here, and we're going to take our wire and we're just going to run it through the backplate. So make sure to get them all through. Um, there we go. And then we'll be able to close the, the keypad. Make sure they're facing the, the proper direction. You want to get the top of the keypad first. Um, there we go. And then we just snap it back on, and the keypad is closed. So now that we have our keypad connected and closed, we're going to connect the other end of the wires to the, the panel board. Um, normally, you would run this through the, the back plate, but we're not going to because this is just an example and we don't have a door anyway, and nothing else is really set up with the back plate. So it doesn't really matter for our example. Um, but uh, we have our, our connections here red, black, yellow, green. Uh, just match the colors. So we have uh, the red one. It can go in the red port, and we're going to tighten that down. OK, um, so we have our connections made, a red, black, um, yellow, or white, and green. And everything's nice and secure. So we're going to go and power on the NEO system. So we have our DSC Power Series NEO system powered on now. And um, we have our keypad uh, wired in. So the keypad lights up as soon as we power the system on. So um, we actually have our keypad already enrolled with the NEO system. But I'm going to go um, show you how you would go about doing it um, if you were adding an additional keypad. If you were adding your first keypad, it would actually just say, press any key to enroll. And you would just press a key. And then it would auto enroll with the system and assign it to keypad slot 01. Uh, keypad slots are two digits. Um, by the way, you can have up to um, eight keypads with a NEO. Some will allow 16 if you have the 128 zone model. But usually it's um, eight. But you still get the 16 keypad slots. So you can add it to a higher slot if you really want to do that for some reason. But for auto enrollment, it's going to auto assign it to keypad slots. Um, but I'm going to show you how you do that now. Um, so first, we're going to get into programming. You do star 8. And then it's going to ask for our installer's code. And we have ours at the default, 5555. Five, five, five. And then this is when we choose a programming field. In our case, we want to choose 902 for auto enroll. Um, and we can scroll between different selections within the programming field. Um, but in our case, 000 for auto enroll is fine. So we just can confirm the selection. You could just enter in 000 if you really wanted to make sure that you're in there. Um, so then you would just press star, and it, it would do the enrollment. Um, we have our keypad auto-enrolled now. Um, so that, that's how you would auto-enroll the keypad. Um, if you wanted to manually assign it, um, you, would, you would access the 902 programming field. I'm, I'm just showing you again just to get back. I did go back out more of many than I needed to. But we're in 902, and we can select it. Then we'd scroll to 003 for edit module slot. Press the star to confirm. And so we have our keypad here. Um, this is the HS2 LCD RF keypad. And it is assigned to 01. If we wanted to assign it to uh, 04, for instance, we could do so. And it does that. We do have a touchscreen keypad um, that is configured with the system, but it's not on there. So um, we're going to go back and we're going to um, assign this back to 01 because I, I just want it on the, ma the main slot. Um, let's see here. That's fine. And we'll keep that at 02. And then we'll assign this to 01. And then there, it's good to go. So we can press star through there, and we'll back out of that using the pound symbol. So and if you ever wanted to check your keypad slots, um, you can do um, programming field 860. And that shows that this is keypad number one, um, just so you can check which keypad you're on. Um, so that's good. And um, if you want to um, assign partitions for your keypad, which is an important step, because uh, this is a multi-partition system, what you're going to do, um, you're going to do this based off of keypad slot. Um, so in our case, we have ours on keypad slot number one. So we use program field 861. If you're doing program uh, keypad slot two, 862, number three, 863, 864, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 876 for keypad slot 16. So um, we're going to do the first selection, uh, 000, um, keypad partition mask. We press star to select it. And we have ours set to partition 1. Now, normally, you can only assign it to one partition at a time. Um, we can scroll through these and see the different partitions. Um, but if you wanted to have it control multiple partitions, um, you can't really select multiple partitions. What, what you would do is you would choose the option 00, zero for a global keypad. And that will allow it to control every partition. Um, so then you would have a global keypad. But in our case, uh, since we're only using one partition, um, we just go on ours to be at partition one. 
that's generally what you want to do. Uh, you only want to use the global uh, keypad option if you have it assigned to s uh, control multiple partitions. If you're just using a single partition, just set it to uh, 0, 1 for partition 1 or whatever the appropriate partition is. Only use that global one if you're going to be doing everything. And then once we're done with that, um, everything is auto-saved. Everything's good. Uh, we can back out of programming by repeatedly pressing the pound hashtag symbol. And that's how you would uh, enroll your keypad with your Neo system and how you would assign it partitions. Um, so we've shown you how to set up a wired alphanumeric keypad with your DSC Power Series Neo. If you have any questions about using a wired alphanumeric keypad with your DSC Power Series Neo, or you have any questions about the Neo, or about alarm monitoring in general, uh, send us an email at support at alarmgrid.com. And make sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up below. And remember to subscribe to our channel for future updates on other videos. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.